Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Finance on Your Terms. As always, I'm your host, Mike Benaziak, and thanks for tuning in. So maybe you're expecting a child, maybe you already have a child. One of the big questions that's probably racking your brain is, how much should I be saving for college education? And I think all of us as parents have some ambition of paying for part or all of college, but we also know the news, right? College is not getting any cheaper. In fact, it's growing anywhere from 3 to 6% in costs per year. Even if you look at an in-state tuition, you could be spending anywhere from seventeen dollars to $20,000 a year for everything from tuition to room and board and all the other supplies that come along with it. That's a big number when you include four years of college, and that's maybe not even now. Maybe you're talking 5, 10, 15 years down the road. So how much should you be saving? Well, it depends on your situation. It depends on how much you want to pay for, and it depends on what you can fit into your budget. What I tell people is let's keep our expectations realistic. So the one thing that comes to mind when I talk to people about saving for college is we've got priorities that are pulling at us from all different sides. And more than likely, one of your priorities is also retiring someday. When it comes to retirement, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of options that we did when we went to college. There's no loans for retirement. There's no scholarships for retirement. We're a lot more limited. So when it comes to priorities, I want to make sure that you keep your retirement as your top priority. And then as your budget allows, let's start then saving for kids' education at that point. And realize that most likely you're not going to be able to pay for all their education. But that's okay. Let's start by setting a realistic goal. Maybe you want to pay for a fourth of it or half of it. And let's set up those monthly goals for you at that point so that where you're maybe having to save $100 or $200 or $300 per month versus $800, $900, or $1,000 per month to be able to pay for all of it. Then, as you're able to save more, maybe you're making more money, then we can actually increase those expectations. But never let a kid's education, I know this may seem bad, get in the way of your retirement planning because student loans, although nagging, you do have a little more time to pay off versus when it gets to be your retirement, you got two choices, work longer or that's it. And so there's really not as many options for you when it comes to retirement. So let's keep your priorities straight. And when it comes to kids' education, there's some very accessible ways that you can deal with that and you can save for it. I'm going to talk about one of those next week. But until then, let's rethink our priorities and make sure that you're paying yourself first. Thanks again for tuning in. This has been Finance on Your Terms with Mike Benaziak. We'll see you next week.